Today, I'll walk you through the most efficient way I would learn data analysis all over again if I had to start from absolutely zero. This is not a video where I'll tell you that you can become a data analyst or any analyst per se in just 30 days by learning a couple tools, enrolling in some courses and doing some projects half-heartedly. If you don't know me, my name is Mo Chen and I currently work as a data and analytics analyst and my ultimate goal is to help you become better at data analysis, like much, much better, so that you can get a better job that you actually enjoy doing with more pay, of course. I have six years of experience working with complex big data in the financial services industry and in this video I'll give you my honest advice on what I could have done better and differently to get to where I am faster and easier. First things first, set clear objectives and learn by doing to meet those objectives. Now what do I mean by this? It is very simple really and please pay close attention to what I'm about to say now. Don't just watch endless tutorials. Don't watch endless videos, complete endless courses, do endless exercises on the same topic or technique aimlessly. Make sure you apply what you learn. Let's take a specific example here and I'll use a very basic but extremely powerful tool here, Microsoft Excel. We all know the ability to navigate spreadsheets is a fundamental data analysis skill. When it comes to Excel, what I see a lot of people do is try and memorize all of the formulas and functions without actually knowing how and where to use them. If you cannot apply the formulas and functions you learned, then you may as well not have learned them, right? Let's say um, you learned various lookup formulas like VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP or index match. To the extent that you can tell me the exact formula by heart even if I wake you up at 3 a.m. but you don't actually know when to use these formulas to solve business problems. This is a very common problem and can easily happen if you solely focus on learning the technical skills without paying any attention to applying what you learned. Because if you actually applied all of those lookup functions you learned, you would know straight away that the most common use case for these lookup formulas would be to extract information that is not in your current table from other tables based on a unique identifier, most likely a single column like order ID, customer ID, product ID, etc. So let me just make my point again here. Don't just learn aimlessly. Instead of saying, I will learn Excel, say, I will master lookup functions in Excel so that I can extract information from various tables across worksheets and files. You see the difference? Instead of having one large, probably never ending, aimless learning task, you now have one super specific learning task where you know exactly what to learn and what you will gain after you finished learning. Create fun and unique projects that you genuinely are interested in to practice your technical skills. And they don't have to be the biggest projects in the world. They can be a simple Tableau dashboard with some analysis, like this customer bank churn analysis I have in my ultimate data portfolio. You can slowly work your way up to more advanced projects, like my AWS ETL pipeline, where I used PySpark, SQL, Python, AWS Redshift, and many other tools and technologies where I created an automated end-to-end -end pipeline to prepare clean data for airline data analysts. I can guarantee you, even if you create the simplest projects in the world, you will learn so much more because you'll have to apply your knowledge to a new data set. You'll have to think about how to clean and organize your data, how to transform your data, and how to actually get the insights you want. Whether it's um, generating insights from data in a relational database using SQL, creating dashboards in Power BI or Tableau or pivot tables and pivot charts in Excel, the moment you actually have to do something different, the moment you have to go off script, the moment you have to do something that is not exactly what you learned in the tutorials and videos, 
that's the moment where the learning will truly start to sink in, because you'll go from copying the steps mindlessly to thinking for yourself and applying what you already know to an unknown scenario. Now that I told you that you should definitely focus on learning by doing, let me tell you which tools you should learn, what order you should choose to learn them in, and where you could learn them. I know that there are so many courses out there where you can learn data analysis skills, but if you're looking for a place where you can get hands-on experience using the latest tools and work on real-world projects, then look no further than Simply Learn's Data Analyst course in collaboration with IBM. By taking this course, you can become a data analyst, a job where the average salary can easily surpass the $100,000 mark. Simply Learn is reviewed and recommended by Forbes, and the course has great reviews that you can easily check out both on Trustpilot and on Course Report. Business Analytics with Excel, SQL Course, Data Analytics with Python and R, Tableau Desktop Specialist, and PL300 Microsoft Power BI Certification Training, these are all covered for you. And of course, you'd have many industry projects to work on with real-world datasets to really put what you've learned into practice. So, if you want to take a big step towards a career in data analytics, check out Simply Learn's Data Analyst course using the link in the description below. And a huge thanks to Simply Learn for sponsoring this video. So, Spreadsheets, for me, are the bread and butter of data analysis. Lots of people say Microsoft Excel is crap and old school, but let's be honest, it's not going away, is it? It's not going away because it is just so powerful. It's so popular because it is a good tool, and I would argue it's probably the best tool for data analysis. You can do so much in Excel. Gather data, clean data, transform data, create visuals, create dashboards, and I could go on and on and on, but I won't. Instead of listing all the things Excel can do, I'll tell you what you should learn as a beginner. Get familiar with the user interface. Know the difference between worksheets, rows, columns, and cells. Once you get past the super basic bits, learn some basic formulas and functions like date and time functions, text functions, math functions, logical functions, and lookup functions. Then master pivot tables and pivot charts and create some dashboards. The next step is to make those dashboards interactive by using slicers and timeline filters. If you can do all of these things in Excel, you can safely say you're an advanced Excel user, which is probably the right time for you to start learning SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. And I know it can be a bit intimidating at first to write a couple lines of code, but I'm telling you that you should not be. Learning the basics of SQL is really not that difficult, especially if your focus is on data analysis rather than data science or data engineering. If all you're doing is extracting some data, getting some insights, or loading data from relational databases into your chosen data analysis tool to do further analysis, like creating reports, creating visuals and dashboards, then you should just check out my full SQL database tutorial course after you're done watching this video, because I still have quite a couple technical skills to cover here. My SQL course has everything from the really simple stuff like select star or select all from, to joining tables, using unions, to group by clauses, and even subqueries. Being able to write SQL code is crucial for analysts because the majority of databases at work will be some sort of relational database, and to query these, the language will be some sort of SQL-based language, whether that's PostgreSQL, MySQL, or Microsoft SQL Server. Once you've gotten comfortable with writing SQL queries, it's time to move on to mastering a visualization tool. Five, six years ago, Data visualization skills were nice to have skills for data analysts or any other sort of analyst, but nowadays, let's be honest, even though the job description says data visualization skills are optional or would be very nice to have, they are pretty much required. Data storytelling skills are very much in demand, so having these skills doesn't really make you stand out anymore, but not having them will in a bad way, if you know what I mean. Now. You must be wondering, which BI tool should I learn? And the answer is simple. 
just learn the one that the majority of the companies that you want to work for use. If that's Power BI, then go with Power BI. If that's Tableau, then learn Tableau. The two tools are fundamentally quite different. Tableau is OS independent and it's solely a visualization tool. The calculated fields in it are based on SQL. Power BI uses the DAX language, which by the way is very different from SQL and is way more than just a visualization tool. Power BI is more of an app. It integrates with other Microsoft products like Excel, Power Query, or Power Automate extremely well. I know there are other visualization tools out there, but I would highly recommend you learn one of these just because they're by far the most popular. You really don't want to waste your time learning a niche tool that only very, very few companies use. So that's the visualization tool covered, which leaves me with only one more big technical skill, coding. Now, this is something that I would urge you to learn last preferably once you're already in your analyst job, as it is by far the most difficult. I would say for me, learning Excel, SQL, Tableau, and Power BI combined wasn't as hard as learning coding in Python. And I'm mentioning Python here because it is my preferred coding language. It's so versatile, it's just an all-rounder coding language. Now, that is not to say that if you learn something else like R, that's useless. All I'm saying here is that if I were in your shoes, and I only have the time to learn one coding language, that's definitely Python. And when it comes to Python, please don't learn anything and everything, as if you do so, I can guarantee that you'll be completely lost. Learn Python with a focus on data analysis by narrowing down your learning to the main data analysis libraries like the pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn libraries. I already made a dedicated video on how I'd learn Python all over again. I'll put the link in the description in case you're interested. Coding for analysts is not that important in my opinion. Now, if you wanna become a data scientist or a data engineer, then coding is definitely super important. But given this channel is focused around data analysis, I guess that's a story for another day for another video. I really hope you found the last couple of minutes of me going through how I'd learn data analysis all over again helpful. If you did, then I'm sure you'd really enjoy watching these videos right here. Thank you so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.